Okay, this is number 117, Ilex aquifolium, the English holly. This is the, the typical, the type, what we think of when we think of holly. So they have these uh, larger coriaceous leaves. They have lots of these spinose teeth on them. They're, they're uh, very much armed, and they definitely will um, uh, um, uh, give you quite a, a, a sharp uh, prick if you uh, uh, get into them too much. Also, this is a female plant that I'm standing in front of, and again, it has the really typical, uh, very large um, <clears throat> uh, uh, holly fruit that's uh, basically why we grow English holly. So English holly doesn't do really well in the, uh, in the southeast. In fact, uh, English holly, it is, it is uh, grown somewhat in the southeast, but it's always grafted onto Nellie R. Stevens, which is a more uh, southerly adapted uh, cultivar uh, for down there. In the Pacific Northwest, however, English holly thrives, and it is uh, grown uh, uh, oftentimes, uh, in addition to just a landscape plant, it's grown for these uh, cut bows that people sell uh, around Christmas time. It's, it, it's so prolific in its production, and, it, and it's so well adapted in the Pacific Northwest that it's actually become quite weedy. It's invaded uh, into uh, native ecosystems, and, and pretty much every hike uh, that you go on, depending on what part of the uh, Willamette Valley in the Pacific Northwest you're in, you will see some English holly. It's certainly in the forests around uh, my neighborhood. So that is uh, Ilex aquifolium. Lovely plant, but can be an issue. Uh, tough to produce or tough to grow in the southeast without uh, growing. Can be somewhat weedy in the, north, uh, in the uh, Pacific Northwest.